In the wake of the downing of a Russian airliner over the Sinai Peninsula last week, Moscow has banned flights to Egypt. Leonid Bushitsky, writing for Bloomberg, says that this is not just a bad sign for the Russian tourist industry, it's a bad sign for the country as a whole. Here on the Press Review, we'll see what Bushitsky has to say. He starts by arguing that the flight ban is particularly painful given the achievements of Russian President Putin during his time in office. Bushitsky writes, President Vladimir Putin's rhetoric and economic policy may be essentially isolationist, but he's never purposefully done anything to limit outbound tourism. The ability of many Russians to travel overseas once or twice a year was one of Putin's major achievements. Although it was his predecessor, Boris Yeltsin, who opened the borders, it was under Putin that most people could finally afford to go. But there is a spanner in the works. Even before the Egyptian flight ban, foreign travel had started to become slightly more out of reach for many Russians. Bushitsky writes, Putin's foreign policy and the falling price of oil have conspired to reverse the growth. In 2014, the number of tourist trips dropped 4%, mainly because of the Ukraine crisis and tensions with Europe. As Russia's recession worsened this year, the decline continued. What the Egypt flight ban means is that Russians now have only a few places to go if they want to get some sun this winter. Russia's campaign of airstrikes in Syria means the entire Middle East could now be dangerous. Southeast Asia and the Caribbean might be possible, but a weak Russian ruble means they could be expensive. In all of this, Bushitsky reminds us that we shouldn't forget about the impact on Egypt. He writes, the flight bans are devastating to Egypt, which could lose 70% of its foreign visitors and a large chunk of the 14% of foreign currency revenue that tourism provides. Egypt's government will try to make airports resemble Israel's notoriously strict Ben Gurion International. But that wouldn't be enough for Russia. The country as a whole would need to become more secure. Finally, Bushitsky wonders about the wider implications of a lack of holidays to Egypt. Is the popularity of the Russian president under threat? Our commentator today says, in the end, maybe not. He writes, there is a bigger risk to the Kremlin itself. Will Russians be angry at Putin for getting involved in a foreign war that has claimed civilians and closed a popular part of the world? Or will they rally behind the government, demanding retribution against the terrorists? The latter is more likely. The Kremlin propaganda machine is already at work. So we end there on something of a pessimistic note, where Russians might be angry at losing a top holiday destination. Our commentator today believes that thanks to the Kremlin's propaganda machine, all will continue to be well. That could yet change though, depending on what further consequences Russia's intervention in Syria will bring. That's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow for another press review. In Kiev, this is Ukraine Today.